Hello YouTube land, this is Brenton Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the bluegrass state. Tripping over my words, sorry about that folks. Um, first off, if anybody uh, wants to share an encounter, whether it's Bigfoot, Dogman, or UFO, or you know, any kind of mysterious uh, you know, encounter or experience, uh, you can contact me at uh, BrentonSon at gmail.com. And anybody that wants to contribute to help support the show, I'll put a link in the description for PayPal me, and I very much appreciate that. And I will try to get the show back on track and get, um, you know, the, the stories out to you on a more regular basis. And just, you know, give me a little bit of time to get it wound up and get things lined up, and, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll do better. And thank you all for being a support and god bless you and uh yeah i guess that's about it well today uh we have some unusual encounters uh a fellow that actually lives here in in uh lexington and uh i thought they were bigfoot stories but i guess they're not so, but we're gonna let him tell us uh really strange uh stories anyway and uh and i think that we'll enjoy this so if you would, buddy, um, if you want to go by your first name or something, just kind of introduce yourself uh, and uh, maybe, you know, give a little bit of detail about yourself and then we'll get into your stories. Uh, yeah, Brenton, um, thanks for having me on the show, obviously. I've listened for a while. I really enjoy it. It's... Uh, it's fun to listen to, especially at night when I'm trying to relax. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, my name is uh, Jared. I live right here in Kentucky, uh, in Lexington. Uh, I've spent most of my time in Lexington, but uh, I've, like, I guess, like the song says, I, I, I've been everywhere, you know. I spent some time in southeastern Kentucky in the Appalachians, with my father's family. I spent some time up north near Cincinnati with my mother's family. So I'm kind of a country boy and a city boy mixed together, you know. It's kind of strange. Been yeah. been in the city more lately, but uh Yeah, just me too. Of, <laughs> yeah. We're in the same of, city, so we might have to get together and do some fishing or something. I mean I really don't I know. know what to go do to have any fun other than fishing, because <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. want to go to bars or well, nothing like could, that. But... We could go squatching. We could yeah. go squatching if you want. Yeah, that would be great. I'm always man. looking. Take the camera and do some squatching and but, let the people come you know along with us. Me more than Bigfoot. You know what scares me more than Bigfoot? What's Are that? Those huge spiders oh, and, and poisonous snakes. Right. And so... <laughs> yeah, snakes scare we, me, but spiders, they creep me out bad, man. I, I uh, ugh, man, when I lived in Texas, I'd have brown recluses and stuff in the house. Woke up one day oh. with one sitting on my chest. A brown recluse, man. I mean, oh my goodness. Oh, you got so lucky you didn't roll over or something and then oh, it got man. you. Ooh, fuck. Yeah, because I knew people that got bit and it didn't turn out good. I'm telling you that. They had, no, it didn't. Big old black spots on their leg. When they, one guy had psoriasis and he got bit, so he just thought his psoriasis was acting up, and he ended up having to get surgery and removed like his big old plug. It was gross, man. He, uh, he would try to, you know, at lunchtime he would show us that, you know, he'd move his foot up and yeah. down. You could see the muscle going around. It's like, dude, no, man, we're eating lunch. You got to be kidding me. And that, oh, that, that's a great. <laughs> great guy to have at the lunch table <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he was we was doing work for him too so i couldn't say a whole lot about it but uh oh well, yeah but he was a real good guy <laughs> he had a big old fourth of july uh thing every year and he'd spent like a huge amount of money on fireworks and and uh you know of course he'd oh, have stuff cool. to drink there and it was always a really fun uh party uh at his his place that was back when i was young and you know, I try to lay off the yeah. drinking and stuff now, but anywho, um, so you have some strange encounters that you've had in Kentucky, which I thought were Bigfoot, but they're different than that. And, uh, if you would, um, 
why don't you start with your first story and then we'll get into your second one okay uh i've got uh two big ones but uh we've i've got some other stuff if you want to get into it that happened to me when i was uh yeah. younger sure but uh uh and i think it all kind of ties together okay. oddly enough yeah sure. but uh pretty much this all started Let's see. I had not really, uh, you know, I'd had a few paranormal experiences. By paranormal, I just mean, you know, uh, beyond the normal, you know. Sometimes, you know, something you can't explain. I don't know. Like I said, I was never really, uh, I guess you would call me a skeptic, I guess. You know? Right, yeah. Like, yeah, like I, I, I never really knew about ghosts or, you know, anything like that, you know. And, and none of that stuff really scared me either, which was kind of funny, you know. Right. Weirder stuff scared me, like we like we just talked about, like snakes scare me, spiders scare me, uh, some sometimes even heights. But uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, I spent a lot of time um, with my papa, and now I've not spent a lot of time in the woods after dark, like on my own, you right. know. So that might be why I've not had an experience because it, it does seem to be a pretty, pretty hot spot, especially in that southeastern Kentucky area. Right. But I have never seen one. But then I've I've heard so many stories that these things could, could stand so still, and you could walk right past one and not even see it, even though they're so big. So you never yeah. know. But uh, right. Yeah, my. Uh, my uh, first experience I want to talk about, I don't have a date on it. Um, uh, I think the second experience was connected to the first experience, and you'll see why. And that happened on January 14, 2011. And this happened probably maybe three or four months before then. Tops. So you're talking late 2010. Okay. And... Uh, I am at my mother-in-law's house, and um, does it matter if I get specific, not too specific, but uh, about where it is in, in Kentucky? Yeah, just whatever you want to say, man. Just say okay. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure. I guess you could say it's kind of close, maybe to Bardstown. You, you pretty much it's it's kind of at the Bardstown town area but in the country i mean you are in the country you, you get off the highway and you go about two three miles and you are in the middle of nowhere it's a cul-de-sac uh whether well, i ain't getting out of it the holler goes down about a mile and there's about i don't know four or five families that live there and it's funny because like i said i'd spent a lot of time up there uh, me and my wife have been together. Well, we just had our 10 year anniversary, actually, and we were together quite a bit before that. But uh, I never really, we never experienced anything weird down there or ever had anything weird happen down there, and up there, I should say. But um, one night, I was out uh, by the pool. Her mother had a, like, a really nice undergrad underground pool made and uh, I was the good thing about the only good thing about being a cigarette smoker is that you're outside a lot which is great because you actually get to see stuff and because uh, I don't think I would have if, if, if I didn't but I, I I'm still a smoker so I gotta quit smoking cigarettes too uh, Britain, me, but, uh, uh, me too bro I, right? I I have a hard time quitting. I, why? I I mean I know if people just set them down and walk away, but um, I've smoked ever since I was a little kid, and I know it's a bad habit, and the fans don't like me smoking. I know that too. Then, uh, but I yeah, I'm gonna try to get some I, patches or some gum and try to make a better effort at it, at it, and that's probably what you should do too. And since you live here in Lexington, man, we ought to, you know, go do some fishing or something yeah. you know 
And, uh, for I, sure, brother. Because I, I, I spent a lot of time alone, you know, and uh, it would be it'd be cool to have a friend to go do some stuff with. But anyway, I'll let you tell Absolutely. your stories. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll get back to it. Um, so pretty much what happened was I was out uh, probably listening to a podcast or something, you know, it used to turn my my phone on. I, I think that was like when the first, right around the time the first or second iPhone came out. So, you know, this is brand new stuff, but I would, you know, pull something up on my phone. and It was about, uh, let's see, about 2 o'clock in the morning. I, I, I'm a night owl sometimes, Britain. I, I'll stay up sometimes until the sun comes up if I don't have anything I have to do. Uh, I don't know why. I, I, I've, I've always been like that. I've always, I don't know. I just feel more comfortable. I, I don't know. But, uh, so I was out there, like I said, smoking a cigarette. That's all. Nothing else. It's okay. I wasn't taking any drugs. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't drinking. Or I'm, I might have had a beer or something. I'll be honest about that. I might have had a beer. But, you know, no drugs, nothing like that. And like I said, this this is strange because this blew my whole world without it without me even knowing it it blew it. That's how big it was, this experience to me. Well, I'm sitting there and I'm listening. Maybe it was to the radio. I'm not even sure if they had iPhones back then, but I was listening to something. Smoking a cigarette, uh and I hear this, uh, uh, lo- not really loud, but maybe if you, if you have a plane flying over you about the land, maybe about, maybe about that, that kind of sound, you know, and it was like a low rumble and it was like a, almost like a, like if you've ever been to a concert and you've heard where, where they unplug the uh, uh, amp, unplug their thing from the amp, and it makes that noise that you can almost feel in your chest, that kind of rumbling yeah, noise. Yeah. That, yeah. And I was like, that's really weird. So, um. I'm hearing that for about 30 seconds, looking around, looking in the direction of, you know, on the horizon of the direction that I'm hearing this from. And about 30 seconds goes by. And like I said, uh, people trust me when something really crazy like this happens that, uh, I mean, this experience ended up almost costing me my wife almost costed me my life and I can get into that too but um, because it just shook me up so much and like I said I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a second how it, it kind of all ties together but um, so I'm standing there and I'm, I'm thinking well maybe there's going to be like a big plane or something that I've never seen before come over or, you know I don't know I'm just, I'm just waiting to see what it is so I'm sitting there and over the tree line very low, very slow, very big comes a huge, and I mean huge. Like I, like I had told you before the show, um, it's hard to measure. Uh, like part of me feels like I could have thrown a rock and hit it, but part of me is like, that thing could have been even bigger and uh but here's a good way to put it. It would be about the size of a house. If you were if you were looking at it, it would be about the size of a house. Maybe like a two story house. Okay. Going right above you. Um. Yeah. Or maybe it's it, it's like it's it, it's like looking at a battleship and saying that can fly. Right. It, it, it's pretty crazy. And what ended up happening... <coughs> excuse me, Brent. <Brandon. laughs> what ended up happening is 
this thing comes over my, uh, not over my head, but it's kind of like about to go over the house. And I get totally panicked. And there is a uh, walkway from the uh, pool to the house. So I just panicked. And I said, I'm going to run into the house and just hop on top of my wife and daughter. Because I, I didn't know what to do, you know. I, I was just stunned when I, when I saw this thing. Like I said, it was going, if I had to guess the speed, it couldn't have been going more than five to ten miles an hour. It couldn't have been. Now, what so, I'll do So it was is basically I'll, just I'll hovering. Just, kind of almost, slowly. Almost. All right. All right. Pretty much. But it was moving. And, and and that's something that I didn't even understand at the time. That's something that, that I, I, like, slapped myself in the head, like, uh, you know, curly from the Three Stooges, because I was like, wait a second, that's not possible. I said, no wind. I felt no wind. Uh, I I said, I did hear a noise, which is funny, because, like I said, I didn't know anything about this. It took me looking into a lot of this stuff since this has happened. And this thing was weird. It looked like, it didn't look like high technology. This is what's weird. I mean, it looked. I mean, it looked like high technology, but the surface of it on this one really, it looked like if you've ever seen like um, like marble, but really old marble that's kind of off color, kind of dirty. Yeah. Or, yeah. That that was kind of that was kind of what it looked like. It looked like it even maybe had a little texture to it. Wow. And on the underneath of it, there were these lines, like these grooves that were carved in, and they would zig and zag uh, in, like, these different directions. And this thing just slowly, just, like, nothing's going on. Like, it's just a normal day. And I'm sitting there, and as I'm running, I'm about halfway there. I'd say it's probably 100 yards from the pool to the uh, house. I'm about halfway there, and this thing is about to reach, you know, the property. And all of a sudden, I just stopped. I don't know what what it was, but I just, the fear went away. I don't know. It was like something in my head just snapped. And I just stood there with my mouth open. Like I said, Brendan, if there's two things I wish, I wish I could have had a camera on that UFO to document it, and I wish I would have had a camera on my face <laughs> for comedy purposes because my jaw must have been on the floor because I just stood there and stared at it, and it just went right over the top of my head, right over the horizon, low and slow, never saw it accelerate, never saw it trying to go up, trying to land. It just went slow and low over the horizon. So that was a really weird experience, as you as you could tell. But um, that was, like I said, probably in late 2010 when it was still warm enough to stay outside. You know, in Kentucky here, sometimes, as you well know, in September and even October. You could sit outside here. I mean, it's it's 90 degrees right here in Kentucky, and it's you know darn near October. So yeah, I know, and I'm I'm uh I usually have this room closed off because all I have is a window air conditioner, and I opened this room and came in here, and it's like, oh my goodness, it's hot. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> The heat here it can be pretty problem. tough, but I've lived in hotter places like Texas, you know, and uh, and oh you, man, you get used I, to it I, when I, you're I out would. in it. But I'm I'm not out in it much, you know, where I'm not really working construction no more. But mm -hmm. anyhow, yeah, I, uh, I got used to it too. And then we 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 went to Dallas to see my family one summer, and oh gosh, just a 
couple of years ago, and oh my gosh, it is so hot there. I mean, they have the best food in Dallas. But oh, it is so hot. And oh it, lord, it, and it's a dry heat too. It's not like humidity. Yes. added in. It's just straight 115. You know, or 110. Exactly. It, oh man, it's yeah. horrible. I'll be it lucky. ain't like New Orleans where you get a little humidity. Right. You know. I'll be lucky Ooh, if I don't get skin cancer. You know, I've I've tried to uh, ever since then when I started learning about you know skin cancer stuff. I I've, I've always wore a shirt and tried to keep the sun off me. But anyway, I'll let you keep going. <laughs> I digress. Okay. Well, here here's the funny thing. So the the next day I tell I tell my wife about it. She knows I, I wouldn't lie, and she knows I especially wouldn't lie about something like that. And like I said, this is where things kind of started to not go downhill because it re- hadn't really hit me yet. It hadn't hit me yet. It wasn't until January 14th, 2011, around 1 o'clock or so in the morning. So this would have been... January 14th, 2011, that day uh, had just started. So the day before had been the 13th. So uh, my mother-in-law has this porch, and um, it's all covered up with uh, plastic that's kind of hard to see through because she doesn't want the wind and stuff getting in there because that wind can whip up when it gets cold, you know, and, uh, get through there. And when it gets cold, it gets cold. But, uh, I heard, uh, what sounded just like a regular airplane. I was out smoking a cigarette again. And, uh, but I, it was cold because it was January now. And, um, so I was inside the, porch which you can't see out of I, I i heard what sounded like just like a regular airplane and um so because of the experience before i just kind of peeked i expecting to see an airplane or a helicopter or something i just kind of opened the door and peeked and my jaw dropped my jaw dropped this was a smaller triangle much more smaller if you were looking at it it would be about the size of a golf golf ball that's about how big it would look i'm just talking about visually but this thing i actually got a really good look at it this thing was sleek it was metal it uh or or, i don't know if, if, if it was metal but it looked like metal like like a blackish type metal, but it was hard to tell what color it was because in each of the corners, uh, it, there was like a really low glowing circle in each of the corners of, of this triangle. And it was a, I heard somebody use the word nuclear orange and that's, that's what, exactly what it looked like it looked like orange and green mixed together just barely glowing so that reminds me of nuclear that almost makes me think it's nuclear and i'm i'm wondering am i losing my mind what the world is going on here within i've you know i've had a couple weird things happen to me that could be explained away maybe But even if not, it's not like this. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And he flies by. He's going a little faster. He's probably going maybe 20, 25 miles uh, an hour and just following the road, just following the road, right over the power lines, just just following them. And I'll be honest with you, Brendan, I think, I I don't know, like I said, I I'm just going to tell the story, but what I'm going to speculate, I'll say I'm going to speculate. Uh, the reason why I thought these th- these guys were military is because I I saw that, 
I went back, uh, closed the door back because it was cold. And I was like, oh my gosh, what in the world? I've just now seen, you know, two different triangles, two different kinds, <laughs> two different speeds. One was huge. And I can't help but feel that maybe that second one was there because of the first one. Because, like I said, this is stuff I'd never seen before. But uh, how many days was this in a park, or was it years? Uh, no, this was only about three months. This was January 14, thousand and eleven, and I saw the big triangle. Um, and you seem to be outside every time you saw one of these. Um, yes. Do you think yes, maybe I they were outside. abducting you, and you just don't know it? Well, he, here's the strange thing, Britton. Um, so that one goes by. This is what makes me think they're military. This is this is weird. This is going to be hard to... Well, no, it won't be hard to explain. Um, so I close it. I go back to smoking my cigarette because I don't like to smoke in the house. You know, so I'm, I'm out on the porch. So uh, about two minutes later, I hear the same thing. And it, it it's not weird. It sounds just like a just like an airplane. You know, it's, it wasn't a weird sound like the first one. The first one had a really weird sound that you could really feel in your chest and that kind of electric buzz. But these had a noise. That's why I knew to look. So when I heard that again, I just, I, I didn't think there was any way, you know. I opened the door again, looked up, and just automatically looked to the same spot. And if I wouldn't be darned, there was another one, except this one. This one looked exactly the same as the first one, except underneath it, underneath it, there was, it was like a a, a neon blue plasma almost is what it looked like or it would almost look like uh you know those holograms that they they put in the sky like disney and stuff yeah it almost kind of looked like that and and it was like uh if you've ever seen those things with rings inside of rings inside of rings and they all move at different times and different speeds all around each other yeah that's what was going on and it was right underneath it it was hanging Underneath the middle of this craft, which also had the 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 uh, orangish green, you know, the nuclear orange color in each of the uh, corners, but but yeah, it looked like a bunch of rings inside of rings inside of rings, and, and all this, of them this this part was just under the under the craft, or the whole craft was rings and and rings. It, no, this was hanging underneath the craft. Hmm. And what's interesting is, like I said, I did a lot of research, uh, obviously, which yeah. is uh, kind of what I was going to get into, how it kind of ruined my life was, is after that happened, I I literally expected, and this is how silly I am, friend, I thought I was going to, I literally went and thought I was going to turn on the TV and see, you know, see... Uh, people have spotted, you know, because even though we're, I'm out in the country, I'm like, how is how is nobody? I mean, there isn't a lot of people around there, and it was late at night both times for most people, you know. Right. But um, uh, I was like, well, I was like, I, I know other people are here. Now, the reason why I thought it was military, Britain, is uh, the night I saw those two, they were both like I said, about two minutes apart, but they were both flying at the exact same speed, at the exact same height, at the exact same, uh, just to me, it looked like the exact same flight plan. And I don't think there's any way that could have been the same one, that that is, same one. Was is there like a military, circle. is there a military base or anything like that around there? Well, Fort Campbell isn't, it's not close. It's not close. But um, there is a place 
there's a legend, and, and if you if you like getting in, into stuff, this is this is something cool to look up. Um, there's a place they believe to be called Camp Kentucky in that area, and um, yeah, around Fort Campbell. After I did my, uh, I, I started doing a lot of research. I went into this head first, and like I said, it really cost me with my wife and my family because. Um, I wasn't spending as much time with them. My wife left me for a little bit because my, like she said, she, you know, your head are, is just in the stars. She's like, I'm, you know, I'm not leaving you because I think you're, you're crazy. But, you know, it was just, she was like, you're living in the stars. You know, you're, I was just a madman researching all this. So, um, they say there is a base called Camp Kentucky because there are so many triangle uh, UFO cases now, and especially in the Fort Campbell area, which is a little south of there, I believe. And um, Well, what what did your wife that, think about it when you told her what you were seeing? She was pretty, she was pretty amazed, but, but at the same time, I guess it didn't blow her away since she didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? You really have to right. see it for it to blow you away. And like I said, what was funny was that was when what I saw the first time started to register because I started to start thinking of simple things like um, physics. <laughs> like I was right. like, how could that, that huge triangle UFO with its by the way, which it had, if you could imagine it, uh, a flat triangle and take the front point and point it down maybe 15 degrees, that's wow. how that thing was floating across the sky. Really low and really slow. And I've actually heard of two other people that have had this experience, I believe. Uh, I think Jimmy Carter said he had an experience, uh, except a lot of people with these triangles say they're silent. And and mine weren't. The ones I saw weren't, which is right. really strange. But when mm -hmm. you look into these triangles, you figure out that they're seeing quite a bit. Uh, and another thing you read about them, which which was weird, is they come in waves. Uh, like there was uh, something called the Belgium Triangle Wave, uh, right. where tons of triangles were, were seen and documented by tons of people. Um, obviously, the Phoenix Lights, uh, uh, although I think that was a V-shaped craft, not a triangle. This was an actual full triangle, you know. And um, the Hudson Valley, the Hudson Valley Triangle. So these triangles come in rashes, which is weird because I had never seen one before and had never seen one since. And I and I think for some reason that. That second group would 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 be military, you know, the one the 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 two smaller craft that I saw, because you know they were both flying together, and I don't wonder if they weren't there because of the first triangle I had seen uh, just probably three months earlier. So. Um, Another weird thing about that area, Bryn, is there are a lot of vets and there are a lot of special vets. Like, there's some biker gangs around here. A lot, a lot of what now? Uh, vets, veterans. Oh, veterans. But okay. these are like special veterans. I mean, these guys were hardcore Marines. Right. These, uh, there's three or four guys that live just up in that, up in that holler area that were in Vietnam. I mean, these guys are no joke. So if they were there for anybody, they were probably there for them, you know? Right. Uh, so that, that now, now that's speculation right there. Right. But yeah. everything that, everything that I told you about what I saw, that's, uh, that's all hundred percent truth. And like I said, that's just me speculating on all the research I've done. Now, like I said, things ended up working out because, you know, me and my wife got back um, together and uh, 
probably just need a little break for a little while. We were driving each other crazy anyway. But I would tell anybody, if you want to see what the the second group of triangles uh, look like, um, the only person I've ever seen, and I've looked up a lot of people who, uh, and this guy actually claims to work at to have worked at Area 51, Hmm. And he's got a really interesting story. His name is Edgar Fouché. And he talks about this thing called the TR-3B. And the way he describes it, the way he describes it, that is pretty much a rudimentary. It would be like a first draw up of what these things were. Like these things were that, but they were a lot sleeker. Like, like if you've seen the TR3B, that that would be like Camry. Uh, those would be like the Lamborghinis. I mean, they were slick. So, of course, he saw what he saw in the 70s when they first started making it. You know, and that was just a prototype then. So I'm sure, you know, 40 years head start in 2010, I'm sure they've, they've got better stuff. But it almost kind of upsets me, Britain, that it is that I've, I'm not sure if it is aliens because imagine that they have that technology, that, the, that they're sitting on that technology. We wouldn't need gasoline. We wouldn't need electricity. I mean, it's just, it's almost more comforting to want it to be an alien because you're like, well, at least their civilization has, has earned it, earned it or, you know, found it or reverse engineered it or however they got it, you know, but our guy did it somehow. And I I think, you know, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see who was fly the craft. I did have a lot of weird dreams in between that, 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 uh, that time, very lucid, um, very strange, not the kind of dreams I would normally have. Um, well, I mean, what kind of dreams were you dreaming of? Abduction stuff, or no, uh, nothing like that that I can recall. I always make sure I say that because a lot of people say that, and then they go into hypnotism, and then they think differently. So, you know, it, 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 do I ever remember being abducted no, or any any dreams? But no, but a really weird thing is during that time period, I don't really dream about aliens or anything like that. And I remember this is all I remember about the dream. I was tired in the dream, and I was in a classroom, and it was a classroom where like the steps were going down, and there were other people in there too uh, surrounding me, and it was dark, and it was lit in the center. In the center, there was, uh, I guess what you would call a gray, like a five or six foot gray. And I remember him. I I don't remember him moving his mouth. Like I said, this is a dream, but I don't remember him moving his mouth. All I remember is being really tired inside the dream, which is strange. And I remember I wanted to put my head down and go to sleep. But he was teaching something, and I I don't know what it was because I was tired and I wasn't paying attention. But I do remember when I laid my head down to go to sleep, he did not like that. He came right over to me and said, wake up and pay attention. And I never remember him moving his mouth. Now, that's, that's, that's a dream. Take it for what it's worth, you know. Uh, but uh, now, Are you sure it was yeah. a dream, though? I mean... Uh, I, I guess you never know, Brenton. I guess you never know because, you know, um, if you really want me to get into it, uh, I've had a, a couple of, a couple of, of strange things. Um, uh, in fact, I, I got one I do want to tell you actually, all right. uh, if that's all right. Or we can end right here. Those are my big story. Those are my two big stories, but, uh, uh, I, I think I've got uh, two more that I think are pretty interesting that could tie in or could not tie in. I'm not sure, but yeah, go ahead and tell them. A, okay, um, sure. Let's start with the 
one that happened first when I was probably about five or six years old. Um, I was uh, asleep in my bedroom, and my bedroom is on a second floor. And so my window is probably, I don't know, 10, about 10 feet off the ground probably. Not something you could easily get to with a ladder either, you know. And I remember I was dreaming. I was in my 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 bed, uh, you know, because I, I, I never was one of those kids that, that got scared or was ever scared of the dark or had to go sleep with my parents. My parents slept across the hall with the door open. So I usually, you know, I wasn't ever worried or scared of the dark or anything, but. I remember I was sitting dreaming and I, and this is going to be hard to explain, but when I was dreaming inside the dream, I realized it was a dream, obviously. And then I realized that somebody was either watching me or around me or something to the point where I woke myself up. I can do that. Uh, it's, it's a really strange thing. When I know I'm dreaming and I want to wake up, I just try to pull my eyes open, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that time it worked. And um, I remember what I, what I ended up calling uh, the Wicked Witch of the West uh, because... It was green. It had big, or it looked like a greenish color, like a like a glowing greenish color, at my window, and it had big black, you know, big black eyes. And I remember calling it the Wicked Witch of the West, and it was almost like, it was almost like I could feel its emotions, because there there they were emotions that were not one that I would have as a kid because I was scared to death. I, I literally, when I woke up and saw that, I literally thought about getting up and running to my parents' room screaming, you know, but what was really weird, what was really weird, Britain is there was a motion of, of, of love and caring and wanting me and part of me wanted to go to that window. And the other part of me was scared to death. So, but what was really weird was I did not want that creature to see me or whatever it was to see me scared. I don't know why. It, it was it was almost like it was an old friend or something that was coming to say hello. Because when I, when I got up. And I went to walk into my parents' room. I didn't look back at the window, but I remember when I turned my back on the window, I never looked back. I just remember feeling this emotion of sadness, disappointment, you know, um, not anger, but um, just, I don't know. I felt that. And, and, and why, why, why should I feel like that? You know, when I'm a kid, if I'm scared, why do I care if, Something I see, you know, although, like I said, I don't know. Why, but why would I care if something I saw thought I was scared or not? You know, it, that's just a weird thing. And my parents to this day remember that story because <laughs> that's the only time I ever came and got in bed with them. I, I came and got in bed with them, and I, I stared out their window all night waiting for what I thought would be the another witch. And the reason I called it a witch was because of the, the the green color and, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West, how she could fly and stuff since, since, since I was on the second floor. Uh, but uh, that was a weird one. But like I said, um, that one could be explained away because my wife was like, you know, could there have been a play or trick of light in the window? And I say, yeah, but that doesn't really explain the other stuff and it's something I've always stood by and 
it's something my parents even still bring up today, the witch at the, the witch at your window. But, uh, here's the, here's the one that really messes with me, Brenton. And this is, this will be the last one I'll tell. Um, when I was a little older, probably about 10 years old, uh, I used to love playing with Star Wars toys. Love Star Wars toys. I wish I would have kept them now because I think they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> I had those original Star Wars toys. And I, I was sitting there playing with them. And Back then, you know, when I was a kid, uh, you didn't have cell phones. And you, had, you, had a, you might have a computer with dial-up internet, but you had a Minesweeper you could play. <laughs> or, you know, we, we don't have, didn't have no iPads. You know, you had wrestling on Monday nights. You know, it was that was all we had back then. You know, if we if we wanted to go talk to somebody, we had to go over to their house. You know, or use the landline. Of course, the kids don't know about that these days. But I was sitting in my room and playing uh, with my Star Wars toys, and uh, all of a sudden, I got this urge. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go outside and ride my bike. Because cause I was just like, all of a sudden, I was just like, I'm bored. I'm bored, and I'm going to go ride my bike. And I remember this specifically. I remember getting up to go ride my bike, which is down in the garage. I'm on the second floor again. This is in a diff- different house. We're uh, a little bit bigger. We had moved over to towards the... Uh, Hamburg area when before we had lived in the Takes Creek area because when we uh, my parents first moved to Lexington the Man of War didn't I think Man of War ended at that underground fire station when we were here and that was where I, I saw that thing at the window was right there uh, in that neighborhood right across from the underground fire station but uh, uh, anyway I remember getting up and then saying, well, you know what? I'm sitting here playing toys. I'm having fun. Why don't I just sit here and play toys? And all of a sudden, I think I remember sitting back down to play toys. But all of a sudden, I just, I don't know if everything went blank or everything went black. But all of a sudden, I felt like I was in a dream. And in my dream, I was riding my bike in my neighborhood. And I know exactly what happens with this, with with this neighborhood, you know, because there's a, there's a huge like drop and then you can turn. You used to be able to fly back in those days and we didn't wear helmets or or anything. So I got, I got really lucky here. And, um, this is the only only time in my life I've had, I guess, what you could call missing time. Uh, I was on my bike. I I came to, and I was riding my bike down a hill. And I was like, huh, this is really weird. I was just inside playing with my toys. And even that part was fuzzy at that, at that, at that point right then, me remembering that. So I'm like, I must be asleep, you know, because like I told you, uh, since I had been five, I always been a lucid dreamer, but, uh, I said, this must be a dream. And, uh, one way in my dreams, how I, how I would tell is I would, you know, run into a wall or jump off of something or, you know, and then you would see that you didn't get hurt. Well, everything's real fuzzy. It's like a dream. I'm riding my bike down a hill. Now the bike starts picking up speed. I'm not pedaling. I'm going down a hill. I take the uh, left into, uh, there's three cul-de-sacs. I take the cul-de-sac to the left because it goes down even steeper. And I'm not even pedaling. I'm just going. And so I go down. I hit the cul-de-sac. I go around the, the go around the circle flying. And I remember just thinking, you know what? I'm going to jump off my bike, I said, to wake myself up. I said, that'll be a good way. Because I was like, this is really weird and it's freaking me out. And I was like, I don't understand why I'm having a dream like this. So 
So I said, I'm just going to wake myself up. So I threw myself when I was coming around. I threw myself off my bike. And all I remember is screaming. Then it goes black. Then all I remember is someone didn't see a face, don't know who they were, uh, even though they said they lived right behind us. And I asked my mother to this day, and she still doesn't. She still doesn't know who it was. And I think she's confused on on who, because we knew all our neighbors, you know. And uh, all I remember is waking up for a half a second while I was being carried, seeing the back of my house coming closer, and somebody saying, "Is that your house?" And I said, "I just said yes." Boom, went black again. Next thing I remember, I wake up in my bed. And my mom, by the way, acted acted totally weird. Like some random stranger who says they're a neighbor just drops off your kid who has just got scraped up pretty bad. And uh, she just thinks I fainted or something, you know. You know, she's acting really weird. Because I'm, 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 when I'm in bed and I wake up, I'm like, I'm asking her, because I'm 10 years old, I'm asking her, I was like, wasn't I in here playing toys, or, I was like, you know, what's going on, and she was just like, no, she's like, you must have just got on your bike, and must have not had enough water, and just, you know, she she was not acting worried at all for what had just happened, you know, and that's the only time I think I've had missing time, and I remember keep asking my mom, I was like, who, who was that, what did they they look like, you know, and she can't tell me. She says he told me at the time, but I don't remember. And my mom was so overprotective for her to act like that. It was just really strange. So that's about it for me, Britain. I mean, uh, I've seen a few other things, uh, you know, like in New Orleans or something, maybe, uh, might have been a ghost, but it's not a very interesting story. But like, uh, like you said, I, I don't really have a Bigfoot story, and I spent a lot of time in the Appalachians and, and uh, southeastern Kentucky, and uh, uh, but like I told you before, uh, I, I I don't go camping much, and I'm not in the woods late at night. But uh, yeah. Uh, Definitely in the in the in the boonies, you can see some weird stuff. But yeah, I was definitely not expecting to be a, a quote unquote UFO guy. You know, that was never my, <laughs> yeah. my thing. And uh, I just yeah, I I uh, I've let it go now because it's been so long. I was obviously obsessed with finding out what it was forever. Right and. And after a few years, after my, me and my wife got back together, and you know, I still lis- listen to stuff on YouTube and do research and, and do as much reading as I can. But uh, I don't think I'm ever going to figure out who was flying those crafts, and maybe I don't want to find out. You know? Yeah, I and, guess there's and, not and much of a way to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, and here's the strange thing, uh, Brent. Um, that first one, that first one I saw, I told you, that looked like marble, that looked like old marble. Right. Yeah, that's weird. weird I've never heard that. that. Do I? I? What's weird about that one is that one looked like it was made for giants. Like, that one looked like the inside halls would be 30 feet tall and, like, 20 feet wide at least. And and what's weird about it is is how do you have something that looks old have have newer technology than we have? I'm I'm um I wouldn't say I'm religious. I'm very spiritual because I I uh, you know I don't go to church on a normal basis. I'm a, I'm I'm sorry. I I don't don't get a chance to, but. Uh, I consider myself very spiritual, you know, uh, 
I believe that God is, is you know, he's in everything, you know, he's, he's, he's in the universe. He's a part of everything. And I really got a feeling like that when I saw that thing, I was like, that's almost like something if angels couldn't fly, which I don't know why, you know, I thought, you know, cause I had read, you know, hearing stuff after this, you know, like a Ezekiel talking about the, the, what is it? The, moving balls and stuff where the guy came down on the on the UFO looking thing and I almost did get like a biblical vibe to it because it 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 was old. Almost looked like something that would have been carved in that time. But at the same time it's a triangle craft that's flying really slow. <laughs> like I said, it's it, it's 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 Edgar Fouché has said it best. It's like seeing a battleship and saying that thing can fly. It's just, it, it does not make any sense. So that's what was kind of funny and, and, and why it took until the second time seeing, uh, UFOs for it to kick in, two UFOs for it to really kick in what I, what I experienced. And it definitely changed my life, uh, and I probably wouldn't have found your channel even if I, if, if I wouldn't have had that happen. So, you know, it's definitely changed my life, but, uh, I yeah. try to, I try to not obsess over it now. And I really don't. I, uh, I, I just say, you know, it's an experience, but it really changed my, it really changed my paradigm. Brent. It really did. It made me question everything. It made me question. You know, the universe, God, aliens, you know, it just makes you question everything. It, it puts, it, it, it lets you know that we are definitely not on the top of the food chain in the universe. Yeah. And I don't even know if these things were made from other planets. You know, they could have very well been made here for all I know. I didn't see who was flying them. I don't, you know, they weren't flying any flags or any insignias. So, right. uh, Man, it's hard to know about know. that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, it's a mystery. And if the military knows something, they aren't letting us be privy to it. So, I'm I'm pretty sure that they know about it. Uh, whatever that was, uh, I'm pretty sure they know about it. I don't think those things can be flying around that low and that slow without them knowing about it. Right. I think it's impossible. So if it's not the military, then they know about it. Absolutely. Right. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, uh, I, I these, believe that too, you know. These uh these triangles and like I said, I've been hoping to actually see another sign. I wish I could could have got it on tape, but back then, you know, I, I think I think iPhones were pretty new and as soon as I, I tried to open my iPhone and look at the time, you know how you do the little slide thing it wouldn't it just froze it right. was totally froze back when i was a kid i they didn't have stuff like that there wasn't even such a thing yeah. as a mobile phone or yeah i had to go inside yeah, and right. dial it you know the round dial that you would hit and it would go back yeah around. the good old-fashioned round dial where you <laughs> yeah you, you, you. <laughs> and we, we didn't really care you know uh i mean we had fun and had good times and i think Sometimes without the phones, it's a better way of living. Yeah, you know, I've I've started thinking that lately. I uh, I actually try to stay off the phone and try to talk to people in person. And uh, uh, it's it's yeah. If you wanted to talk to people, you either went inside and used the big old dial up dot, rotary dial, or you went to yeah. see them. You know, and uh, I don't know. It just seemed that, to be some good times back then, and. Uh, well, everybody didn't have the didn't have a phone in their face, you know. Everybody went, didn't have their eye, eye you know, their their yeah. So their you, went iPhone. Out, you went outside and did stuff, you know. It, uh, yeah, I I just think it was I mean, a funner time in a way. Um, I agree, Brenton. I, I do. Uh, back then, you had to use your imagination. You know, we 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 really had to use our imagination to come up with some. Some yeah. stuff to keep us entertained. Play, playing with the Hot Wheels out in the, you know, outside in the dirt pile, and you know, yeah. pretending like yeah. that's your your car, or your truck, or whatever, and uh, you know, and then set up some yeah. other little 
uh, things that would be representing homes and kind of make a little city. It, and it was it, it was definitely a simpler time, and to me, that's better. Simpler is better. I yeah. guess that's just the country guy, guy in me. So, like I said, I'm, I'm a bit of a country country guy since I spent so much time out in the Appalachians and and right. uh, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I've even been to LBL and and uh, uh, down in Tennessee quite a bit. Uh, never had that uh, experience in the wood. I I definitely heard some strange things in the woods uh, at her mother's house. Uh, right. Like, maybe, I don't know, the only way I could describe this sounds like 30 cats being tortured and killed all at once. <laughs> I mean, that that's what it sounded like. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was some kind of horrible sound. Wow. That's I don't know. Oh, man, but, but uh, uh, yeah, your stories are pretty cool anyway. Um, so I appreciate you telling them. That's not a problem for at night. Like I said, I, I, I was actually kind of excited to get it off my chest. I, I, I told my wife, obviously, and, uh, my, my brother, uh, well, I think I've told both of my brothers and my dad, maybe. It's not something that you want to go, it's not something that you can necessarily go around sharing, you know? Yeah, I know. You just don't want, them, you don't want people to think you're crazy, and and uh, but at the same time, you've seen something so special. You know something exists out there that's so special. It just blows your mind that you wish everybody could see it because when you experience something that close, like I said, especially with the first one, because to me, I think it was it was closer and it was bigger and. And that's why I think those other triangles were there months later. Yeah, you know they had probably they had probably been there looking for that thing or whatever. And that thing by itself almost looked like it was looking for something. Because why would you be going that low and slow if you're not uh, landing or, or taking off? And you can see, I mean, there's a lot of trees out there, but you can you can see over the horizon or the clear out clear out where we're at and uh right. he just kept going he just kept going so i, I don't know, know i only know of one person that's had a sighting here in uh lexington and uh basically there was a craft that was sitting up over a house and she had a friend that saw it too that was i guess on the other end of the street and they somehow ended up, you know, uh, talking about it. And it's like, i seen that too. And But then other people were walking around and driving around and weren't looking. And uh, that's what was amazing her is how nobody else is seeing it. You know, it turned out her, she had a friend that saw it. But, you know, the cars, I guess the people in the cars are just looking at the road, not paying attention to. Yeah. Uh, What's funny is um, they're... Uh what was it, uh, our local NBC channel here a few years ago did a story about how, um, I think his name is David McDonald, who's the Buffon director. They ended up interviewing him uh, because he said there's been, uh, they were talking about how there's been so many uh, sightings of UFOs that they put Kentucky at like a class five or something and they were making a story about it uh of course they were trying not to not to take it too serious but at the same time they were kind of, they were taking it serious you know they weren't making a joke about it but uh like i said he he's a trained pilot but what's interesting is he was talking about a story where there was a guy on the truck on the highway and he said big triangle came down right over his right over his truck and just all his power shut off just like just like that Wow. So I, I I think some of these might be electrical. Like I said, I think some of them might be nuclear. Uh, yeah. I would suggest Edgar Fouché if anybody wants to, to to look up that he's he's the guy who's who's actually claims to have worked somewhere that has seen something that I know that I can verify. 
that I've seen. Right. So, so that's really important. I can verify that Edgar Fouché somehow either knows about those, heard about them from somewhere, or like I think he is the, the real deal. Right. Especially if you listen to his whole story. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, Britain, I, uh, I, uh, I've seen I a lot of weird that. things. I just never seen a UFO. Uh, um, yeah, it it'll change. It, it it really changes your perspective on life. It really does. And and, and it, spiritually, you'll you you're gonna go crazy. You know, spiritually, you're gonna have roller coasters and and because uh, you just you know, you almost ask God, why would you show me that and then yeah. take it away? Because my curiosity is is what gets me. You know, I'm yeah. just too curious. I, I have to figure out. See, my wife could have had that experience and and uh, said, "Wow, that was really cool and really unique, and probably never happen again." But I'm like a detective. I, I, I I'm so curious. I just I have to get to the bottom of things, you know. Right. Well, I appreciate but, you sharing, man. And uh, if you see anything else, let me know. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Uh, I wish. <laughs> it's been since two thousand two thousand and eleven, but uh, I guess they're they they either weren't there for me or like I said, I think they were there for some of the the vets that lived around there because those guys were in black ops. They were they were fought in Vietnam. I mean, they got stories like you wouldn't believe. Right. I'm sure they're there for them.